In the repair shop today, size matters as a giant photographic relic. This is enormous, isn't it? That is a mighty long bellow on there. Requires an epic rebuild by Susie and Brenton. I think it will stand up by itself. It's a tower. It is the Leaning Tower of Bellows. <laughs> and vintage toy restorer David Burville. That was a bit nerve-wracking. <laughs> works in miniature with a 1940s curiosity that's fallen on hard times. It's a really tricky surface to glue because this plastic is so thin. First to arrive at the barn is Carol Reynolds from Belfast with an item that personifies someone very dear to her. It requires the skills of both furniture restorer Will Kirk and metalwork specialist Dominic Chinia. Hello. How are you? Hi there. Look at this. Wow. I'm Hi. done. Hi. I'm, I'm Carol. Carol, How are nice you? to see you. Hi, Carol. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi there. Brilliant. Look at this. Yes. This is my dad's toolbox. Is it really? Yes. Tell us a bit about it. Well, my dad was a toolmaker by trade and he worked for a long time in engineering companies and then he worked for a large electrical item producer, made tea makers, kettles, things, and he made the tools to make the kettles. Um, we didn't know this existed until after he died um, when I found it in my mum's shed. What was your father's name? William Charles Brown. William, that's a William. good name, I do like yes. that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How did this get into the condition that it's in now? It was in the shed, damp, um, which obviously didn't help. Brought it up to my garage, it lay there for a while, and then I decided that I would break it open. Oh, I broke the lock out. <laughs> Guilty as charged, this is my doing. But having broken it open, there were lots of things inside that really brought back huge memories about my dad. Well, I'll show you some of these. Is it all still in there? Yes, it's all no. still in here, yes. Oh, wow. We find this little sketchbook inside are all his drawings and oh, calculations and probably stuff that people don't do anymore no. about making tools, you know. There were other little things, like all these little tools here, all ones he's made, was nice it's as well. Really now, like... all very rusted, God. messy, yeah. all very dirty. When we got this opened, it was just like imagining him standing doing all this at the yeah. box. He was just a lovely man and 30 years on I still miss him. Just from seeing this couple of drawers that you've taken, I'm already starting to get a picture of what he was like. Mm -hmm. It really shows in his, how neat everything is and how organised. He was, was very it? particular about having everything in its place, which is why he would be absolutely horrified oh. to see this. And I'm afraid I've let him down badly, so I feel that I have to make reparation and get some sort of beauty restored to this box. Yes. Yeah. Well, it looks like you've got your work cut out with the woodwork. Well, don't you know have think? you seen the <laughs> state of the tools? I mean, it's so much Yeah. But I just love the box yeah. itself, and I would yeah. love to see it just cleaned up so that I could set it somewhere as a reminder. Where will you put it, if we are oh, able to do it? Well, I have a place in my living room for it, and I'd like to be able to tell the grandchildren just whose it is and what it was for and show them how he worked. Of course, because they never got to meet him. No. Thank you so much for bringing this in and trusting us with it. I can't wait to like, have a look through this. Lovely to meet you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank, Thank you. you. Nice to meet you. See you, See you later. Bye-bye. I feel a great deal of nostalgia about that box. The box is a very real link to my father because it's, it's just him in a box, really. It's just everything he represented. My dad would be so appreciative that the toolbox was being brought back in its, its rightful condition. Isn't it brilliant? What a it, thing. I know, it really is a, a lovely box. It's a treasure chest of tools and all the, the history that's wrapped up in here is amazing. Shame about all this damage. I know, yeah, yeah I think you've definitely really got your work cut out. Some of these tools are really sort of fragile, precise engineering tools. They are. These really would have had a nice, they need a nice little cushioned. So maybe I'll get some bays in there yeah. as a sort of finishing touch. Just to keep them, keep them all nice and safe. Yeah, definitely. Brilliant. OK, I will leave with all these. Good luck with all of that stuff. See you soon. <laughs> Before he can even start his repairs, Will needs to break the box right down into its individual components. 
Well, that's all the metal work off now. Before I can tackle this damage to the top, I need to give it a really good sand. Now that I've sanded the toolbox back, uh, it's given me a chance to have a better look at exactly what's wrong and what's broken. Now, rather than patching these damaged areas with new bits of oak, I think it would look a lot smarter and a lot cleaner to uh, cut out all of this damage here and uh, insert a new piece of oak. This box is held together with uh, finger joints. So these little bits of wood here come together First thing I'll need to do is take this top off and cut out that damaged wood on the front. Next to arrive at the barn, Jackie Lazelle from Ipswich, along with her partner, also called Jackie. She's brought along a stunning antique heirloom for the attention of vintage camera enthusiast Brenton and leather restorer Susie. Hello. Lovely to meet you. Okay. I'm Susie. I'm Jackie. Nice to meet you, Jackie. <laughs> and this is Jackie too. So. Okay, I'm Brenton. <laughs> Hello, Brenton. Hi. Hi. Right. I can see a tripod there. So what yeah. have we got in the box? This is Grandad's camera. Oh. <laughs> How exciting. Oh wow. Very nice. My Grandad gave it to me. Your grandfather, was he a photographer? Yes, he was, yes. He made portraits and he also took wedding photographs. He actually took my, he? my parents' wedding Did he? Photographs with, this with, with this camera? With this camera, That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And these are tricky things to use, so he must have, you know, been a good photographer. Yeah, but it's the old-fashioned photography. It's not yeah. digital or anything like, um, you know, things are now, yeah. because it's all manual in those okay. days. OK. Did you spend a lot of time with your grandparents? Yes, I did, yeah. yeah. He said to me, look, I'm going to teach you a few things about photography. I'm going to teach you how to read light yeah, yeah. and how to alter the aperture of the camera yeah. and the shutter speeds and things like that. I watched him do all this. So and, he, he um, taught you that, He taught me, yeah. He always liked to see the pictures I've taken. He's so full of encouragement all the time, really. Yeah, so, good. I mean, it's looking so sad now, and I really am um, hoping something could be done about it. The shutter has had it. The glass on the back. OK, yeah. You see, oh, yeah, it's got yeah. a crack in it. Yeah, the, OK. And also the bellows, okay. the rotting yeah. away on the sides and um, everything. Well, the bellows are frail anyway. Yes, and they're, yeah. they're 100 years old. No. The bellows will split. Stop it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, that's why Susie's here. Oh. Um, and if we do no. manage to do all these things and get the camera working again, what will you do with it? I'll use it. Oh, use, use it. it? Yeah. No, I've never used it, and oh. I, I would really love to, quite honestly, okay. because, I mean, it, it is such an amazing thing. When I first met her, she had it on a shelf. OK. And I know that she really loved to have it mended and, you know... Well, you knew how much it meant to me, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. Well, I mm. think, really, quite honestly, if it, if it could be done, it's a, bit of a miracle to me if it could be mended. Mm -hmm. yeah. Leave it with us and um, we will scratch our heads a bit and <laughs> see what we can do. Wonderful. Thank you very Lovely. much. Nice to meet you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for bringing the camera. Bye-bye. Bye. This camera was my grandest pride and joy. I'd be really proud to know that I'm actually doing something about getting it working and possibly bring it back to life. Invented before the era of photographic film, plate cameras projected images onto glass. The expandable bellows moved the lens to find the sharpest focus. Brenton and Susie will need to pull out all the stops to get this fine example working again. So, have you worked on a camera before? They have made bellows before. That is just what I wanted you to say. Okay. Okay. Because these bellows, the fact that I can get my finger in just that one hole and there's holes all the way along there mean right. these are not light tight. OK. So if I can take these bellows off here, you can copy them. Absolutely, okay. yeah. I've got the ground glass screen on the back to do. Mm -hmm. The shutter not working could be quite tricky. Until I get in there, I won't know. OK. Um, I'll get the bellows out and bring them over to you. All right. <laughs> So 
So I'm going to try and cut these off. This is enormous, isn't it? That is a mighty long bellow on there. That's for really close up work. I'll just admire that a bit before I hack it off there. <laughs> On his workbench, Wills replaced the crowbar-damaged wood from the toolbox. The next step is crafting the edges. These finger joints are quite deep. It's quite hard to get a pencil in there, so I've had to sharpen my pencil up to a really long point in order to get into those grooves because I can make sure I'm right up against that line and get a really nice clean cut. In the outdoor workshop, Dom's immersed himself in assessing the damage on the many tools. This is honestly like looking through a treasure chest of tools. You know, like all of this sort of stuff is fantastic. It's perfectly usable still. Just needs a good clean, make it usable again. So my main issue with a lot of these tools is rust. That's a perfectly good spanner. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. To clean that off, I'm gonna use my die grinder with a little burnishing wheel on it. It's like a wire brush on a wheel. That is going to save me a bit of work, a bit of elbow grease. I really am in my element here. Uh, I do tend to spend almost every weekend in the summer traipsing around boot sales and antiques fairs, just collecting old tools. And I use many of them, and I have, have done for years and years. So it's, uh, I'm really enjoying this. This, is, this isn't work. This is, uh, this is just a nice afternoon for me. So here's the moment of truth. I have cut these new finger joints as snug as I can. I think I'm gonna give it a go. That's a really nice fit. It was nice and strong. Carefully color matching the new orc pieces to the old will conceal Will's repair of the box's case. Really nice to line the inside of the drawers with some green bays and display these lovely tools. I'm going to stick the bays inside the drawer using some double sided tape. I could use glue, but there's a high chance that, that glue can seep through the fabric and cause some patches. The green bays complements the woodwork really well and it'd be really nice when Don puts tools back inside the drawers. That's one down. Six more to go. On the other side of the barn, Susie faces an equally mountainous task, making the replacement bellows for the 100-year-old plate camera. Just going to start marking out each individual panel. Because if I make one mistake, the whole set of bellows is going to be ruined. I've gone through meticulously making sure that everything is going to line up exactly right. These lines reference where the ribs of the bellows are going to go, and the ribs are the reinforcing pieces of stiff paper which help to form the concertina effect. I've got four panels, and there's 31 on, a, on each panel, so that's like 124. And I've done two. <laughs> I have a feeling I might be here for a while. But the camera won't be snapping any photographs unless Brenton can fix its jammed shutter mechanism. This is not cocking and staying black. That should stay black so that the photographer can get their picture ready um, put the film in and the film doesn't get exposed until he's ready to press this button and it goes click. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to get this into its bits, lay it all out, see what bits are missing off it. This blind, which spins quickly and takes this hole past the front of the lens, has snapped. 
there's a roller at this end, a roller at this end, and it's either been worn out or overcocked or something, but it has snapped. So what I'm going to try and do is splice another piece of silk just to get it back up to length again, and hopefully it'll work. OK, very pleased with that. I think that's going to work really well. So now I've got to work out how this goes back in here. I'm just going to pull this now and hopefully I'm going to get one click when the shutter is open. There you go, that's clicked. And that's now um, letting the light through so that the photographer can set up their photograph. So that um, appears to be working. The barn's next arrival is Margaret Webb from Montrose in Scotland. She hopes clock restorer Steve Fletcher and model expert David Burville can get an unusual childhood gift back to its original charming state. Hello. Hello. Hi, I'm Steve. Hi, do you do, Steve? I'm Margaret. Hello. Pleased to meet I'm you. David. Have yourself a seat. Thank you. What have we got here? This is a marionette theatre my father bought for me in 1940. This was made in Japan, this toy. And did he buy it for a, a special occasion? Yes, it was for a first Christmas. I was only two months old. Oh, right. So a very special gift for me. How does it actually well, work with? Well, this is the clockwork you, you, to wind this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's amazing. I've never seen anything like it Have you before. Not? That is the most unusual thing, isn't it? It's, it's lovely, isn't incredible. It? What do you think made your father buy it, especially when you were just two months old? Maybe drink. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was in the pub, and the man that owned the toy shop, he was in the pub as well, and he must have just got him to tell him what Christmas things were in the shop. What was your dad's name? Jock. Jock. Well, he was Jock the Coalman, <laughs> and everybody knew him because he used to deliver the coals with the horse and cart. He was hard-working, but he wasn't well paid. Right. He went into a pub after he finished his work to clear the dust from his throat. That was his excuse. Well, of course. <laughs> so, <laughs> when he showed my mother what he'd bought for a baby, she was furious at him spending his wages. There were seven of us, but we only stayed in a one-bedroom house, top and tailed in the bed. Yeah. We never, ever got expensive presents. I can just imagine um, the picture of, of your dad after a hard week's work coming into the house and being proud that, of what he's bought and then your mum's reaction. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but my mother must have forgiven him at some time because she looked after it. She kept it on top of her wardrobe. Right. And only brought it down to let us see it playing. But I really loved it. Must have been a real treat. It's been very precious. It looks really well looked after. What would you like me to, to do? It's in need of repair. The roof of the stage is just disintegrated with age. There's things that's come up. The bell that jingles on the bottom and the doll's leg is off. Really, I just love it. I love the colours and that of it. It's you know, beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. It's a bit jaded looking. Yeah. Thing, and it would be nice to have it in a bit better condition yeah. if it was possible. Yeah. I'm thinking that I should pass it on. Yeah. And when I go, I want to pass it on to my granddaughter ah. because she would love it. Oh, lovely. You know. Margaret, thank you so much for bringing this in. We'll do our best for you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Pleased to meet you. And you. Thank you. you take care. Thank you. All the best. Thanks. Bye, -bye, now. Bye. My marionette theatre. It's the only thing that's left that reminds me of my father. I'm hoping that we'll be putting it on show, so I'll be looking forward to getting it back. 
I'd love to have seen Mum's face when he walked in the door with this. Know, that would have I been know. amazing, Absolutely. amazing. But what are you going to do to it? Well, I think the first thing is to give it a good clean. Yeah. My main concern is that the dolls, being made of that very brittle sort of bakelite yeah. form of plastic, there is some damage on them. So I've got to glue that back together, stabilise that. Yeah. Because when they're swinging around, they're banging into I each know, other. And, so it's got to be really, really solid. And then um, the all important little bell. We've got to yes. put the little bell back yeah. on. OK. Shall we get it over to your bench? Yeah, that'd be great. Super. I'm just going to start giving it a very gentle clean. I'm going to use a very basic technique with hot soapy water, but I'm going to use some talcum powder. We think of talcum powder as being very, very soft, um, which, which it is, but it just adds a little bit of abrasion, just enough to help lift any sort of ingrained stains and dirt but very, very gently. Already you can see a bit more of the colour in her face in comparison to something like her arm, which is really quite dirty and dull. So I'm really pleased with how that technique has come out. I'm going to carry on with the rest of her like that and get it back to how it looked when Margaret first remembered seeing it as a child. On her workbench, Susie's still toiling away on her ambitious recreation of the camera bellows. How are we doing, Suze? Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. No, that's not leather, is it? No, it's not. No, this is a material that you can use to make these bellows. Right. Originally, these are the original bellows over here. They were made of, of leather. Yeah. The problem is, in today's world, with our houses having central heating, yeah. it tends to dry the leather out. Yeah. So Jackie wants to use these, and I thought, well, I'm going to upgrade the material that I'm going to use so they last a lot longer. This is really quite painstaking. Yeah. Um, but it's going to mean the world to Jackie. Right, If yes. we're able to get this right. Exactly. Okay. Right. Cheers. No problem. On the adjacent bench, Will's restoration of the oak toolmaker's box is almost complete. Well, all the woodwork's done, everything's polished, the drawer's been lined with a new bays. Uh, the last thing I need to do is to get the metalwork back onto the box. <laughs> How you doing, Will? Not bad, you're right. <laughs> I've got those tools. Look at this one. Not seized that one. I didn't even know what that's for, but I'm sure it's <laughs> got some kind of use. <laughs> Neither do I. Oh, is that a box? Wow. You're good, aren't you? Looks nice, right? <laughs> Looks unbelievably nice. Can I open it, yeah? Please do. Oh, look at that. You've gone above and beyond. You? So, have you completely finished this now? Everything's finished. All right. So I'll leave those with you. You're going to put them back in? Thank you. Nice one, Jay. No problem. When Carol left her late father's beloved workbox at the barn, it was in a sorry, splintered condition, and the tools were encrusted with rust. Now she's returned, hoping the box and its contents will reflect once more the pride her father took in his work. As a mixture of emotions, I had fear that I had given them too much of a job, uh, so I'm really excited to see how it's turned out. I will. Very nice to see you again. Nice to see you again. You okay? Nervous? Yes. You shouldn't sorry. be nervous. <laughs> very nervous. What are you hoping is underneath this blanket? I'm hoping that it looks something like what my father would have yeah. had it look like had he still been working with it. I can see you're desperate to have Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Can I touch it? Of course. Yeah. Oh, dear, 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 dear. That is just beautiful. 
<laughs> it doesn't even look like the same box, does it? Can I open it? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Mm. Goodness me, that looks beautiful. <laughs> You've even cleaned up the little box. Oh my goodness. That is so nice. Well, I think Dom has a real appreciation for the tools. He's spent ages cleaning them up. Did you? Thank you very much tools, indeed. It's just all cleaned up. It is absolutely incredible what you've done with this. That's a proper piece of furniture now. It That's really it. is. That's super. What would your father make of this box now that it's all been cleaned up and repaired? He always liked good workmanship, and I think he would be very, very happy with this. Indeed. Good. But it's, a, it's an era, gone, um, but we've got a little bit of it here still. I can't stop touching it. <laughs> I can't wait to get, for everyone to see it. Please don't lose the key. No, And if you no. do, find a locksmith, not a crowbar. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you Thanks very much. Again. Lovely Thanks. to see you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Have a safe trip. <gasps> Enjoy it. I will. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Opening the drawers and seeing all the little tools just took me back to him. Just to see all those little things again that he had handled was just lovely. And it's just a lovely thing to have of my dad's. Thanks to David's conscientious workmanship, the vintage marionette theatre is scrubbing up a treat. I've managed to polish all the metalwork up and that's come up really nicely. But I've now got to reattach the bell. That was quite important to Margaret, I think. I've made a little brass hook and I'm going to solder that onto the bottom of the plate. I've got to be really delicate because too much heat will actually damage the paint surface and that's something I really want to try and avoid. So what I'm doing is I'm using a damp cloth that will help to absorb the heat on the paint surface and hopefully using an old-fashioned soldering iron I can just apply very quick heat, get it soldered and it's not going to be there long enough to actually heat up the paint for it to be damaged. Fingers crossed. Right, put it in flux. Right, well that's, that's now attached. The moment of truth, the paint is actually still in its original condition, so that's really good. That was a bit nerve-wracking, <laughs> but um, now that's ready to have the bell actually attached. Just to curl this little tab over. And there we are. The little bell should ring nicely. For Susie, the sweet sound of success is also getting closer. Whew. I can't say I'm sorry to have got to the end of that job. The next stage will be to start gluing this panel to the other three sections. Brenton, any chance that you could possibly help me with this? These look brilliant. Oh, thank you. I still you, like... don't, you don't look like you need help. <laughs> no. <laughs> I need a lot of help. OK. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously, this is a yeah. crucial part. Yes. This one here wants to line up with... That. Well, you, the black. Like that there? Yeah. I just won't move. You keep it tight. Right. <laughs> I'm afraid if we're wrong now, we're committed. No going so, back. No, I don't think so. <laughs> OK. <laughs> All sections of the bellows must be perfectly aligned before they're glued together, or it'll be back to square one. This is it. Okay. Um, there's no turning back. Let's get this yep. done. Keep it lined up. OK, I'm down. I think we've done it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy. Right. I think it will stand up by itself. It's a tower. It is, the Leaning Tower of Bellows. 
So that the bellows can be opened and closed with ease, Susie must make over a hundred identical folds. It starts to fold in a way it wants to go, and I'm like, hurrah, I <laughs> got it, and then it misbehaves again. Really up there with one of the most difficult jobs I've had to do here. Brenton's been taking an equally measured approach to the hand grinding of the camera's replacement viewing screen. And you can hear a sort of scratching noise. And that is the glass being ground by the engineer's steel block. It's vital for composing and focusing the images. I'm just going to pop this back into the back now. That sits in the back of the camera. A diffused light coming through there, perfect for focusing an image on. That's all the creasing done. I'd like to say it got easier as I went along, but quite frankly, it didn't. <laughs> now what I'm going to do is encourage it all together, and then I can put it on the weight and uh, leave it for several hours, like Zebedee. Really pleased to have got to the end of that. I think I deserve a cup of tea. On the far side of the barn, David's ready to get his restoration project all singing and dancing again. So I'm now looking at the doll from the marionette theatre and uh, she's got some quite bad damage to her skirt. She's made of an early form of plastic, um, more akin to Bakelite almost. It's, it's very, very brittle. It's probably tenth of a millimetre in thickness, so it's amazing that it's lasted as long as it has. But I've got to try and glue this back together. It's a really tricky surface to glue because this plastic is so thin, just trying to join the cracks to get it really in the right position which I think is about there. I'm using my fingernails so that I'm touching as minimal surface area as possible. Not the easiest of tasks. But if this delicate dancer is to swing safely alongside her partner for more decades to come, glue won't be enough. So David's dreamt up an ingenious way to prevent future damage. So I'm just about to put this felt material into the doll to use as strengthening. Now, this is actually um, wet wipe. And I was trying desperately to think of a material that was flexible enough. And wet wipes are actually incredibly strong. If you've ever tried to tear one, you, you have a real trouble. So it was the ideal material, really. So I'm just using a paintbrush to dab the wipe into all of the folds and the creases of the plastic skirt. That's going to stop any further cracking when she's dancing around with her buddy next to her. The little chap, unfortunately, one of his legs has come unattached. Fortunately, it looks as though it's only a case of just hooking it back on. And I've got to make sure I get the leg in the right direction as well, or else he's not going to know whether he's coming or going. Yep. So I'm just going to crimp that up with a pair of pliers now. That's him ready to dance. On Brenton's workbench, the 100-year-old plate camera is almost ready for action. But crucially, it still needs Susie's painstakingly crafted bellows. Hey, Brenton. Hi. Got a present for you. Oh, wow. Ta-da! These are fantastic. Are you all right? Well done. They're amazing. Thank you. Oh, you're very so welcome. Good. I'll leave you to Well done. Again. Thanks. OK. 
Okay, so that's glued on there now, and I'm going to try and pull this out to meet the front. And see if it works. And then we'll just close it up again, make sure it's happy to go back together. Very good, very happy with that. Photography enthusiast Jackie is back with a partner, hoping her late granddad's camera can be used again. Hello. Hello. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Hello. Jackie. Good to see you again. Lovely to see you too. <laughs> right. Yeah. You're, you're looking a bit apprehensive. Yeah, yeah just yeah. a bit. <laughs> We've been busy, busy. Well, I bet you have. Yeah. yeah. Shall we, My um, goodness. Put them out of their misery. All right. Okay. Oh my goodness, mate. <laughs> Wow. That is amazing. Goodness me. What's it taking you back to? It's taken me back to a time when Grandad was alive, obviously. I think he'd be absolutely stunned. I think he thought it was irreparable. OK to see his old camera, his old pride and joy. Yeah. Well, it's how it Actually should be. Stunning. It's it is, It's now how it should yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dear to me, I... <laughs> <laughs> the bellows are so good, they don't sag. <laughs> Seems you spent a long time doing those bellows. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We saw yeah. them. Yeah. We not saw talking them. to me anymore. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what about the shutter? The shutter works. You're joking. Oh, that is amazing. You being a keen yeah. photographer made yeah. it all the more special to yeah. the two of no. us. Yeah. Because yeah. we knew you were going to, to use it. Oh. Wow. Oh. Yeah. So, shall we just uh, box yeah. it up and take hands yeah. okay. and start playing with it? Thank you. Been a pleasure. Thank you ever so much. It's been oh, wonderful fun. fun. Thank really you very much. Oh, thank you ever so much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Granddad's camera is able to take pictures again, which I thought would never happen. It is overwhelming. Quite honestly, I can't wait to use it now. If I can try and <laughs> can you imagine me setting that up in the town or something. <laughs> oh please don't. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to David, the two tiny marionette dolls are almost ready to get back on the dance floor. But their venue still needs its refurbishment. So I'm just working on the roof of the marionette theatre. We've got a little bit of damage to the, the little ridges here. And um, I'm just worried that they're going to fracture off and break. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line the inside with some new paper. And that will just strengthen and stiffen it up and stop it breaking in the future. So, see if it fits. Perfect. It's ready for Margaret. Really pleased with that. Hopefully Margaret will be too. Margaret has returned to the barn hoping her very first Christmas present from her late father, nearly 80 years ago, is robust enough to entertain future generations. The theatre reminds me of my dad because he was a happy man. I hope that they've been able to repair it. I did have intentions of handing it down to my granddaughter, but not when it was broken. Very excited to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello. How do you? You OK? Yes, great. How Hello. Nice Good to, to see, see you again. I <laughs> hope you haven't let me down, David. <laughs> straight in there. Oh, dear. So do you want to see it? Very much. <laughs> Go on, then. Are you ready? Yes, I okay. am ready. Oh, oh gorgeous. <sighs> So sweet, the little faces. <laughs> oh, that's super. Do you want to give it a wind? I'd love to. Bless 
Oh, that's gorgeous. Oh, the lovely little wee faces. <laughs> <laughs> they really do dance, don't they? Yeah. Oh. Pretty going for yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> it's got the little bell I back saw on. That. Yeah. yeah. That's lovely, David. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> You've made a really good job of that. In my house, this toy never would have lasted. No. <laughs> never. <laughs> it's been a really fun thing to work oh, on, my you know. Friend, it's I'm been glad, great. I'm <laughs> glad. I'm glad. You've done it up beautiful. It is to be handed down to my granddaughter, but I might keep it to myself for a bit. <laughs> Have a little play around with it. Yeah, it's lovely. Thank yeah, you pleasure. very much, David. It's been a pleasure, absolutely. I, I appreciate pleasure. it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Thank you. you take care. Thanks. Nice. Okay. It was lovely to be able to play with the theatre. He's really done a good job of it. It brought back lots of memories. My granddaughter will be very excited to get it as a gift. I'm so happy. <laughs>